Good evening. It is now five past nine um, on the 13th of January 2020. This um, is a Monday tonight for those listening on the replay or for those who are listening you know, on uh, iTunes or Spotify or watching the replay on Facebook or YouTube. It's a Monday, the 13th of January. It's that point now where I think everybody, let me know if you feel it yet, is kind of like at least back into the swing of things from today. I think last week was a bit of a non-event in terms of people really getting stuck back into work i think people would still have like been crawling out of their christmas slumber into work this is really like you know the proper start to 2020 i reckon and that's what i want to talk to you guys about tonight um really starting this year as you mean to go on we've done loads of stuff over the last couple of weeks we've done goal setting we've done getting clear on what it is that we want out of 2020 we did that last week if you've not seen those broadcasts or heard those podcasts if you listen on the ads on this tv audio experience on itunes or spotify go back a couple of episodes listen to those if you watch it on replay um on youtube or um Facebook, go back a couple of videos um, and check those out. But tonight, I want to talk about something that everybody should be doing if you want to get work as an actor this year. If you've got something to say, you've got something to show, i.e. a showreel, a headshot, you're represented with an agent, you're on Spotlight, whatever, and you want to get work from casting notices this year, you've got to be reaching out yourself as well. You can't just be waiting for your agent to do it all for you. And I think... It's no time like the present. I think kind of moving on from this week onwards um, is definitely something that you should be doing. I think, you know, people are enthusiastic about the new year. People are raring to go. Casting directors are, you know, back in the swing of things. They're looking for new talent. New projects are going to be coming up, um, you know, over the next few weeks, um, you know, for 2020. Stuff's getting commissioned. Stuff's, you know, getting greenlit. There will be projects that are going to be up for, uh, you know, casting very shortly. Um, so you want to be getting yourself out there and get yourself seen. I sent an email out this morning, again, to the email list. Hopefully everybody got it. Lots of people are joining now as well. Good evening, by the way. Shannon, Jessica, Steve, Bernard, how you doing, mate? Hope you're well. Um, Mary's just joined Georgia as well. Um, I sent an email out to the email list this morning um, showing people how you can find the email address for practically any casting director in this industry. Not everybody, but about 95% of casting directors are covered um, with this method. Um, did you get it? Have you watched the video? Basically, I got a little bit annoyed over the weekend because I saw, you know what, I saw somebody upselling people a, a book of contact details for casting directors going, here you go. I mean, I get it. There's kind of value in it in terms of it will save you a little bit of time, but you don't want to be paying for stuff like that, which is readily and freely available online. A casting director worth their salt who casts great TV will be a member of something called the Casting Directors Guild. Nearly all of them, unless they're new, um, you know, or they're moving from being a casting associate, you know, to a casting director, um, they might not be on there at the moment. And there's a couple of casting directors that are really legit and genuine who just, you know, aren't members of the Casting Directors Guild. Um, but the most, for the most part, the people who you really want to get in touch with who cast the biggest TV are going to be on there. And the Casting Directors Guild have a website themselves with the details of these people on there so that you don't have to buy email addresses, you know, or books of contacts from anyone, you know, Spotlight years ago used to do a book called Contacts. Um, it's kind of built into the database now online. If you are a member of Spotlight, you get access to that. Um, but you don't even need that. You just need, I'm going to show you, do you want me to play you this video? I'm going to play this video showing you how you can use two websites that you, you, you will know them both already. Um, but I just walk you through how you would basically go from watching a show and going, you know what, if they do another series of that, I'd love to be in that. I'll walk you through going from there to finding out who cast that show to then finding out the email address for that casting director. And as I say, the whole point of this broadcast tonight is not to go, go and spam all the casting directors. You know, that's not what you want to do. But I'll also play you a video after I show you this video uh, of an interview I did with Andy Pryor, who's one of the biggest casting directors in the country. He casts massive projects like Doctor Who, um, where he's openly saying, I enjoy getting unsolicited emails. Um, I still get people in the ads on this Facebook group, you know, saying, is it okay to email casting directors? You know, will they accept this? Is this like the etiquette in the industry? And absolutely yes, because if you are not going to promote yourself, who the hell is? Your agent can only do so much for you. They're looking after another anywhere between, I don't know, 50 to 150 clients. Um, if you're not doing stuff yourself, you're missing out on massive, massive opportunity. Um, so I'm going to play that video for you now. Sarah, good evening. Or Sarah, hope you're good. Glyn Jelly, my accountant's in the house. Again, I give a shout out to Glyn. He's done my accounts for me again. Um, my company accounts are my personal accounts as an actor. And um, the guy's totally legit. And uh, I don't have to stress. This time last year, Glyn, I was so stressed out because my old accountant... Um, 
was, I won't name them, but my God, they were shit. I mean, like, bad. Not just, like, quite bad. Massively inept in terms of, like, the first draft of the accounts that I had from them was out by five figures. Um, it was ridiculous. Glyn, Summit Accountants, if you need an accountant, he's the man. In fact, Glyn, at the end, I'll play a little uh, video of you as well talking about how actors can be targeted by HMRC for investigations. Um, people think if they're an actor and they're not earning a lot of money and maybe they're not even paying tax right now because they're not over the tax threshold that they are immune to uh, investigations and you're not, guys. So you've got to be making sure that you are filing your accounts even if you are not paying tax You know, because you're not above the threshold. You've still got to be filing the right stuff um, in case you ever did get pulled off that roulette wheel and got you know a bit of an investigation because it could set you back some cash and a, and a fine if you're not doing it properly um so uh so i will play that in a little bit Lynn. alex good evening janet good evening luke good evening dale grant great surname good evening nancy's here andrew's here right let me play this video um i've taken it off act on this off the website so it's as if like you'll hear me like talking as if i'm talking to people already on the website ignore that just it's a bit of a, uh, a walkthrough of how you can find practically any casting director's details for free those listening on the audio experience just listen to this if you want to watch it in your own time i'll give you the e uh, i'll give you the address actually where you can go and watch this online for free because i don't want people paying um for this shit please don't pay anybody for casting directors emails like you can get this stuff for free so it's only like five minutes long i'll be back after that and we'll chat a bit more Hey folks, how are you doing? It's Ross here from AtsOnThis.tv. Thank you so much for hitting play on this video. Um, I know you're going to find it really, really useful. I'm going to cover something in this video that I get asked a lot about, and I am also seeing actors getting ripped off um, with people selling them what I'm going to show you in this video as well. Um, ultimately, every week I get asked by actors on Twitter or via email um, for the contact details for the most influential cast directors in TV, the guys who cast the biggest shows on TV. And I'm seeing people sell this information, right? Don't buy this information. If you need a, a, an email for a cast director, you know, or a Twitter handle, if they're on Twitter, phone numbers, all this kind of stuff, it's freely available online. Please don't pay anybody for this information. There's, there's so many better things you can be spending your money on as an actor investing in your career than this information. I'm going to show you in this video very quickly how you can find any casting director's email address um, very, very quickly. Um, don't spam casting directors. That's not the point of the video. I'm going to give you these email addresses. Um, you should only reach out to casting directors when you've got something relevant to say. If you, you know, your headshots have changed, you're introduce introducing yourself, um, you've got a new cut of your show reel, you know they're casting something that you're super suitable for, um, but you can find this information out um, for their contact details very, very easily. The website you can see on your screen right now is my website, actsonthis.tv, Acts on This, the TV Actors Network. This is a super legit website. You're probably on it right now, to be honest. If you're watching this video, you'll be on one of the pages of the site. Um, but after this video, do check it out. On this site, I, I host... Oh, it was getting on for over 200 hours worth of incredible acting career advice from these very casting directors that I'm going to show you how you get their email addresses now. You'll see um, videos and podcast interviews um, with the biggest casting directors in TV. We've got Andy Pryor there, Doctor Who casting director, Line of Duty casting director, Daniel Edwards, Hollyoaks casting director, Peter Hunt. But I also host interviews with agents, with actors. We've got Oscar winners there, BAFTA winners, uh, British Soap Award winners, um, the most legitimate people in TV. If you want weekly coaching and actionable advice to help you get unstuck in your career, ultimately get clarity, understand what it takes to get a great agent, land more auditions, book more work, and earn a full-time living from acting alone, um, do check out the site. It's well worth getting a membership. Um, let me just show you though, right? Say for instance, we had a look there, right? Say that Daniel Edwards, right? In the middle of your screen there, he cast um, Line of Duty. He actually cast Line of Duty with another fantastic casting director called Kate Rhodes James. But Line of Duty is a massive show. So many people want to be in it. Um, you know, it would be uh, very handy to have these people's these contact details if you thought you were suitable for Line of Duty and you had a show reel that could show you that and you wanted to get it in front of these people. Um, if you didn't know it was Daniel and Kate who cast Line of Duty, first of all, here's how you would find that information out before we even look for the contact details. If you go over to a website, imdb.com, International Movie Database, it stands for, imdb.com. This is probably the biggest um, database of TV and films in the world. Every single show that's been on TV, every film that's been out of the cinema is on here, and everyone who is involved with that production is included. So say, for instance, you just watch Line of Duty on TV, 
You had no clue who cast it. You missed the credits, so you couldn't find out, you know, from the credits. Um, you're like, actually, you know what? If that goes again for another series, I would love to be involved with that or I'd love to at least have a shot at getting an audition. You would go to imdb.com and very simply just type in Line of Duty. It instantly just comes up there, look, Line of Duty. I click on that. It takes me to the main Line of Duty page. Now, you can see, I mean, this is, this is a page with just full of information on Line of Duty, right? But at the very top here, can you see this link here? It says Full Cast and Crew. I'm going to click on that. And that's going to take me through to a page of the full cast and crew. So it's a very long page full of every single actor who's ever been on it, um, directors, all kinds of people. But if we keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, eventually we come to these credits here where you see things like uh, the producers, etc. You know, the uh, the music, who did that, the cinematographers. And, uh, and have a look there. Oh, look, series casting by Kate Rhodes James and Daniel Edwards. So now we know, if we didn't know already, who casts the show okay so this applies to any show you can think of it will be listed on imdb.com so that's your first free tool you want to use now we have these people's names let's have a look so we go daniel edwards okay i want to write to him where do i go you use this website here and this is the cdg.co.uk and i'm going to go to the home page i'm already in the directory that i'm going to show you there but i'm going to go to the home page of this and um, this ultimately is the Casting Directors Guild. Any casting director worth their salt working at the top of the industry will be a part of the CDG, okay? So if you go to the cdg.co.uk, you'll hit the homepage here, and it's scrolling through all these slides of stuff that's going on um, that members of the CDG have cast. Now, if we click on this link here at the top, Members, click on that, it's going to take us through to a little database of every single member. They're all casting directors. So I'm just going to search for, I'm not even going to type... Daniel's full name in. I'm just going to go for Edwards and I'm going to hit enter and there you go look Daniel Edwards comes up I'm going to click on that and here's all his information so we've got email addresses um, you know phone numbers we've got uh, Twitter handles all the information publicly available for free. Now, as I said at the start of this video, don't abuse this information, whatever you do, okay? It is absolutely the right thing to do to, to you know, publicize your work, your career, get on the radar of casting directors. You must do that, okay? There is nothing wrong with writing to casting directors. And I know a lot of actors are like afraid of it. They think it's like, oh, what am I gonna say that could, I could, you know, be put on a, on, a, on a list where they don't like me and they're like, I'll never see that actor. I mean, that's nonsense, that's never gonna happen. You're not gonna say anything in an email that's gonna upset somebody that much. If you're reaching out to introduce yourself, um, you know, to um, send a new showreel through, send headshots through, etc. Or you're aware they're casting something. Maybe you've seen them put something out on Twitter and you want to get in touch. I don't know. Um, as long as it's relevant and you're writing for a good reason, do get in touch with these people. You know, it's the only way you're going to get on their radar and ultimately, you know, it will lead to work. Um, I'm just going to uh, click back and we'll just do it for, uh, I'm going to go in the members area again. The members area, the members directory. Um and I'll just uh, I'm just going to type in Kate. There'll be a few Kates, but let's have a look. Kate Rose James. There we go. Click on Kate Rose James. The other casting rights are for Line of Duty, and all the details are there. Um, so that's it basically with these two websites: imdb.com and thecdg.co.uk. You can find out, you know, the contact details for these people. Um, please don't pay anybody for this information. Um, you don't need to. It's nonsense, and I just hate seeing actors ripped off. Um, so that's it. If you are watching this video because you're a member of Acts on This already, because I'm going to post this in the members area for my members on Acts on This TV. Um, thanks for being here. I massively appreciate you. If you're not a member of Acts on This TV and you're watching this on another part of the site that's not protected, um, do come and check out the site honestly. And if you've got any questions, please tweet me. It's at Ross A Grant or at Act on This TV. Um, you will find the most legitimate acting career advice in the industry on this website um, you'll find a new podcast going up on the site every week and um, we do live career builder calls where I'll bring a casting director in and well it's online so you can you can actually join from your own home jump on your webcam you can get your questions answered directly from these casting directors I'll bring agents in actors and we're talking like massive people you know I've had Oscar winners on this site the biggest casting directors agents 
actors, writers, producers. Uh, we do in-person meetups. Um, it's an incredible community that, you know, I, I guarantee you, if you become a part of and you act on the information on this website, that's why it's called Acts on This, um, it's going to, you know, take you way further, way faster in this acting industry. Don't try, like it says on the, on the headline there, stop trying to figure it all out on your own. Um, you just can't, or it's going to take you years longer. Become part of the community. And there's uh, currently over 600 actors in the community who will all help you. And as I say, you know, hundreds of hours worth of information from the biggest people in the industry all waiting for you to get access to it instantly um, right now. Check out the page this video is on. You never know. There might even be a special offer on this page. Um, or sometimes I put out trials for like a quid, for like a pound, where you can try the site out for a pound. Um, absolutely no no, you know, con attached to that at all. You try it out for a quid if that deal is on this page. And if you don't like it, um, then you don't pay anything else. Okay, it would normally be a seven-day trial for a pound. Cancel before the seven days is up and you won't pay anything else again. If you do go on to have a full membership on the site, it will still only, so cheap, it will still only cost you um, the price of like a Starbucks latte every week. Okay, so many actors are like, oh, you know, I don't have any money to invest in my career. It's so expensive being an actor. Um, and yet they'll go and, you know, they don't, they don't think twice about spending seven quid on a coffee and a cake at Starbucks. It's a complete false economy. There is nothing better to invest in than yourself. Um, so I hope that you find that useful. Um, please share this video with any other actors who might be looking for cast directors' details. And you know, like I say, we don't want them getting ripped off and charged for that. Um, and if I can do anything else for you, like I say, please tweet me. Once again, it's at Ross A. Grant, um, at Act on This TV. Or you can always drop me an email. It's Ross at ActOnThis.tv. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you with you soon. Bye for now. Boom. There you go, folks. That's just a little video there um, of how you can find, as I say, literally any, practically any casting notes as details um, to get in touch with them online for free using imdb.com and the cdg.co.uk. Please do not pay anybody for contact information. You don't need it. And like I say, though, as well, don't, um, don't abuse it. Um, you know, make sure you uh, are reaching out with relevant stuff. You, uh, you know, you have something to say. I'm going to play a little clip now from Andy Pryor talking about that very thing. Um, and this really is just to settle people's nerves about reaching out. Who, be honest with me, um, is still nervous about reaching out to casting directors? And I guarantee you, you're only you're only nervous and apprehensive about it because you are petrified probably of the judgment of somebody else. You are you, you, you are catastrophizing in your head that for some reason you are going to get it wrong, you're going to say the wrong thing, you're going to be blacklisted, the casting director will not email you back, you can't handle not having a reply. What if you get a reply that's nasty? What if you, you know, you're just, you're, if you're not careful, you basically very, very quickly talk yourself out of taking any action at all. If that is you, let me know because I want to. Uh, I'm going to play a video for you now that hopefully is going to allay your fears. Um, but let me know also, like, what is your reason for not reaching out? And we'll try, you know, we'll try and work through that tonight as well. We've got bags of time left tonight. Um, there was also, yeah, a little uh, a little explanation at the end of what acts on this TV is for those who are new. Maybe you're watching this for the first time. Uh, if you all want to go and watch that video again, guys, later, members of acts on this TV, you'll find it at the bottom of the members area. Um, you'll get that completely for free forever. Um, if you want to go and watch it and you're not a member, you can still go and watch it for free. I don't care because I'm giving it away. I don't want anybody paying for uh, for information like that. Um, go to actsonthis.tv forward slash casting. That's all it is. Actsonthis.tv forward slash casting. Um, you can also find out more about the website. I think there might be the trial offer, the one pound trial offer. Might, don't hold me to it. It might be on that page. Um, I don't know if I've took it down because I don't do the trial offers all, all year round. Um, but yeah, acts on this.tv forward slash casting. Uh, Brendan said, met up with a mate. That's good, Brendan. He said, met up with two friends that he's not seen for over 20 years. Guess what? One's a, uh, a headshot photographer and one designs websites. So now he's getting free headshots and a free website. <laughs> Top work. That's what it's all about. Make sure you, uh, relationships is what this entire, well, not just this industry, but life is is uh, is completely uh, predicated on, isn't it? Uh, Rich from Miami. How you doing, mate? Thanks for being here. Sharon Spink, thank you for being here. Thank you for signing up to the website. Um, I uh, I know we've been kind of, you know, you've been on the fence for a little bit now and, you know, now and then, and now you've committed to it and, um 
I saw you tweet Peter Hunt, the casting director from Hollyoaks, say you'd watched his interview. I think it's one of the best on there. If you are a new member to the site or if you're an existing member and you've not seen Peter's latest podcast with me, I did it the week before Christmas. Um, he's the casting director for Hollyoaks at Lime Pictures. So good. And he talks you through a lot about getting you know getting in touch with casting directors via email. Uh, Martin says, it's been far too long since I joined one of these. Martin, where have you been? Good to have you back. Uh, Patrick McKenzie in the house. How are you doing, Patrick? Hope you're well, mate. Keep seeing your Instagram posts. Um, keep it up. Andrew's here. Says, everybody, watch, has everyone watched the Peter Hunt podcast? It's great. No, honestly, it is really, really good. Tom's in the house. All right, Tom. Jasmine's here as well. Thank you for being here, Jasmine. Um, Charlie's here. I'm nervous that I don't have enough to say. Right, okay. Let me play this video for you, Charlie, right? And this is for everybody who's afraid of reaching out to a casting director. This is Andy Pryor, one of the biggest casting directors in the country. He's up for two nominations at the moment at the CDG Awards, one for casting Years and Years for the BBC last year, one for casting the film Stan and Ollie was massive. Um, here's what Andy and his casting associate, Ree, who is also a legend, what they have to say about reaching out to casting directors and, you know, we'll just have a listen and we'll talk about it in a sec. Where do you where do you find that? If someone's listening to this and like, right, I need a plan of how I can get in front of Rian Andy, right? <laughs> let's give him a bit of let's give him a bit of actionable uh, actionable advice. Yeah, well, it's kind of hard to say because there isn't a single route, is there? Yeah, I mean, there's not. Definitely not. I mean, we do all sorts of things. Obviously, you know, we speak to agents and that, but we also look beyond that and it's hunt, know, hunt people down, hunt people <laughs> down, or and we do keep emails as well that we get in from people um we file all of those and so sometimes it's time to look through and you, you know because this is yeah. a, it's a big fear stuff. of a lot of people is like one of the honestly one of the biggest like topics that i get emailed about on a weekly basis is uh, our actors emailing me and they're all i don't know why they want to ask me but like almost asking me for permission to get in touch with casting directors like you guys you know and well, like, I, you know i i can't speak for other casting directors but straight i straight down the barrel of this Andy. Mm -hmm. i, I can't go. speak for other casting directors but um as far as we're concerned we 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 like getting unsolicited emails from people we can't reply to them because we get so many but yeah, we exactly. do we do read them we yeah do look we at read them, them we keep them if there's something you never know like sometimes someone comes in and you're like oh that's exactly what we're looking for right now so and if not we put them in a file and we can look back at them when we need to so it is yeah even though yeah we can't reply because there's so many but they're still there and I think, being you know people often absorbed people often ask how often they should get in touch and i i always think if you've got something new to tell us you know if you're in something if you're in a play if you've got in a tv show or a film or you know you've done a short film and have got a link to send yeah. or if you've got a new show reel they're, they're the times to mm -hmm. get in touch there are people who probably overdo it a bit yeah. and email <laughs> too regularly with nothing new to say and that's probably not such a good idea but you know if you've got something fresh to say then yeah. let us know Right, so there you go. You've just had permission from one of the biggest casting directors in TV to reach out, okay? Um, again, what he said there, you know, how often should you reach out when you have something fresh to say? Now, John, you were saying there that you don't think you've got anything to say. Kay, good evening as well. Kay from BBC Ability, who gave me the cup for BBC Ability in the background there. Thank you, Kay, uh, for joining us. Hope you're well. Yeah, John, you were saying that, you know, at times you don't feel like, you know, you've done enough or... You don't feel you kind of like warrant reaching out. Um, Andy just said there, you know, literally when you have something new to say, so a new cut of your show reel, a new headshot, you know, if you're going to be in something, I think equally a valid, a valid reason to reach out is the first time you're reaching out just to actually introduce yourself. You know, I did that one at drama school a lot going, hey, listen, whoever it was at the time, you know, um, just wanted to reach out, not had the pleasure of meeting you yet. You know, I'm a new actor based in Manchester. I've just graduated from drama school or I'm about to graduate from drama school. Um, you don't have to be at drama school. Don't get hung up on that either. Um, you know, I just wanted to reach out literally just to introduce myself. My playing age is such, such a thing. You know, you know, my casting bracket is like at the time, like, you know, authority types. Um, you know, if, if there's anything that you, you know, you're reading right now, you know, please bear me in mind, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to be seen for, you know, literally anything. Um, and that's a, that's a valid enough reason. Don't like bore them with a the whole thing of like your CV. I did this and then I went to this place and I've done that, you know, they can read your CV ultimately, but just a brief email of like, you know, six, seven lines, just introducing yourself with a link to your show reel. Um, I think is more than enough, you know, 
of a reason to reach out. And then when something changes and like Andy said, you have something fresh to say, um, then reach out again. You know, I think once every sort of quarter, once every three months to keep people updated, if you are doing stuff, maybe you're shooting new show reel scenes, you're involved with short films. Uh, even if you're just starting out, you know, and you're doing a few uh, independent short films, student stuff that you've got a couple of scenes from, you know, if it's decent stuff and you think your performance is good and you're proud of it, um, it's your duty to put it out there. You've got to do it. But if you, you know, if you overthink it, you'll talk yourself out of it because you will feel not enough. So many people are just so afraid of, you know, ultimately losing something that they just don't actually have. It's like you think you've got something already. Like, well, they're my friend right now. They don't know you. If I, if I email them, maybe they won't be my friend. Well, they're not actually your friend anyway. They've never clapped eyes on you and they don't know you exist. So actually just reach out because you have nothing to lose and absolutely everything um, to gain. Lucy, good evening. How are you doing? Uh, Sharon said, I, I listened to Peter Hunt's podcast yesterday. Sent him an email this morning. Nice one. And Peter was saying, listen to your emails. Show some freaking personality as well. He says, you, you know, he's, he hates the emails. Dear sir, madam, the formal ones, please find attached my showreel. He's like, listen, show some personality in your emails when you reach out to us. If something is happening, say you're reaching out to someone in a serial drama, they cast in Coronation Street or EastEnders or Hollyoaks or Emmerdale, and you are a fan of the show and you are watching it, you know, show that in your email. If there's been a huge accident on, on you know, one of these shows and your casting type is the nurse, reach out going, listen, I think you should be bringing me in for these nurses. You know, it seems like, you know, you, you're going to need a lot of them. Maybe you used to be a nurse. Make sure you tell them that. Um, same if you used to be a copper or anything that are these day player roles that they're casting a lot of. Um, don't hide that away. Steve Connolly hid that away. I don't know if he's watching tonight for quite a long time. He, w- he used to be a policeman for 10 years and he would write in his emails, I left another job later in life. Now I'm pursuing acting. Um, the minute Peter Hunt found out he used to be a policeman, when I phoned him on the podcast that we did with Peter Hunt, if you're a member of TV, you get an opportunity for me to phone you on these podcasts. I can't phone everyone, but I will phone everybody eventually. You'll get a podcast where you'll, you'll be invited on um, to ask your question to the, to the guest. And um, when Peter Hunt found out Steve Connolly was a copper, um, he got him in for a general audition just Monday, just gone last week, a week, a week ago. Um, had he not told him that, he probably wouldn't have got him in. So um, don't hide like your previous careers if you used to be something, you know, regardless of what it was. If you used to be, I don't know, a bloody butcher, tell them. You never know when they might need an authentic butcher. Um, Kay says, my reason for not reaching out is writing that email that captures their attention and being different. Um, we can uh, all do emails, but it's being creative in a way that gets them. Just personality, Kay, which you've got bundles of. It's ju- Honestly, it's just personality. You don't have to overthink it and be clever. Um it's just showing a little bit of who you are, you know, as um, as my agent Jane says a lot, it's like just adding some flair. In fact, let me see if I've got a clip of Jane because she's talking about showreels and what she, when, when, cat, when actors reach out to her with emails and the showreel they attach, I'm sure I had a clip of Jane saying what she liked in a showreel. And Jane always uses the phrase, like, I like putting some meat on the bones, Um She's not a vegan. A <laughs> uh, meat on the bones of, of the photograph. You know, when you, in fact, I'm sure she says it in this clip. Let me see if I've got this for you guys. Um, yeah, if those who are not have not got an agent yet and you're reaching out to agents with your showreel, this is only one opinion, but this is my agent, Jay, in Hollywood. She's brilliant. Just love this woman to bit. She's, oh, she's just the kindest agent I've, I've ever known as well. Um, but this is what Jane says about showreels when you're attaching your showreel to an email that you might be sending to her. Let's have a listen to this. What do you want to see in a showreel and what don't you want to see? Well, I have to agree, not montages. No one you're likes thinking, montages. Let, let's get to the meat. Let's get to the meat. You yeah. know, let's see the actual thing that exactly. you can do. It's a bit like how the montages remind me of those American reality TV shows. Right. Where they, <laughs> you know where they go, where they show you lots of, mad things and then you think right and then if you actually sit down and watch the whole program you think well I saw that in the montage and now there's a few words around it as well you know so I actually want to see that scene and I want to see you speaking what I don't want is I don't want a whole 15 minute film which sometimes people do send you wow Uh, even when you're if you're the only person in that film I still don't need to see the entire film I just need you know pertinent clips from the film 
I would, as I said before, I would like to see you working with other people, but where you're heavily featured in the scene. Uh, I don't want the scenes where the camera is on the other person, but we hear your voice. I want to see you. Yeah. Um, I want to see as big a range as possible. And by that, I don't mean... I don't mean I want to see you doing lots of different accents because most of the time in telly, they're not going to ask you to do lots of different accents. You're going to be a posher or rougher version of Of what you really are in life. But it would be good to see you doing something quite aggressive, to see you doing something more light. If you've done commercials, then it's great to see you do a little commercial clip and also to see your bit on Corrie and, you know, all those. And, And really, it's just getting a taste of you. So I put some some flesh on the bones of the photograph really of yeah. what you've sent and also that you look like that photo yeah because that <laughs> sometimes you get one. that i get the photo and i think oh this person looks really interesting and you look at the show reel and then i think is that oh hang on oh yeah. oh so that's what they really look yeah. like the amount <laughs> and of it's times. a really great photo yeah and then you're trying to work out who they are in the show reel Boom. So she sounds lovely, doesn't she? Because she is. Um, Jane Hollowood, massive shout out to you. Uh, been my agent for a few years. She's awesome. A uh, shout out to Kat and Frankie in Jane's office as well. Both incredible women as well. Um, but yeah, that's just one agent's opinion on what they want from a show reel. But I think that, you know, that advice is pretty universal. So we're talking about emails tonight, sending out emails to casting directors, sending them out to agents, etc. Um just bear that in mind when you are reaching out with a show reel in terms of is your show reel for 2020? really showing you off or have you been using it all throughout 2019 not getting very far and you're still planning on using the same thing in 2020 um einstein says didn't he well i don't even know if it was einstein you know it might be hearsay but he said you know doing the same thing over and over again um is the um you know definition of insanity um doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result so if you are um you know using the same reel that you used in 2019 and it didn't work for you have a look you know are you putting in clips there that are focusing on the other person in the scene and we're just hearing your dialogue um actors are tempted to do that when they've been in a scene on telly with someone famous the person who's famous will feature in that scene like 95 percent and then that other person might only have like five percent most of the of the you know the camera work is on the famous person and you might just hear you saying a couple of words um remember it's not their show reel like you know i fell into that trap a little bit when one of the very first jobs i did was with peter capaldi who went on to play doctor who and juliet stevenson two massive names and um we managed, me and Chris Stone, the, the showreel producer, managed to edit a lot of them out of the scene to make it look like I was more featured. Um, but if I didn't do that, it would have been way, way more focused on them. And although it's great to go, yeah, here we are in a scene with these two guys um, who are really, you know, really well known. It wasn't Juliet's and it wasn't Peter's showreel. It was my showreel. So you've got to make sure that it features you. Absolutely no montages. Don't think we need to put that advice out anymore. That's very uh, a 90s kind of thing. Um but yeah, just, you know, is it is it showing you off? You know, are you proud of it? Are you happy to put it out there? Um, if you are sending emails out, you'll feel so much better about sending emails out if you are super proud of what is in that email in terms of if you are happy with your headshot and you are happy with your showreel. Don't, right? If you're getting headshots in 2020, uh, it, 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 I don't know what your opinion of this is, right? This, my opinion and what I see a lot of actors do, they go and they get some headshots and then what they do, and I don't know if they're doing this for significance or as like an unconscious bias or they're doing it because they really haven't got a clue who they are, but they will get it down to 10 photos and then they'll put them in a Facebook group and they'll get everyone else in the group to choose their photos for them and it's bullshit. Um, I don't know if they're doing it so that they just get all the nice comments going, oh, you look lovely, hon, you look amazing, so pretty, you know, whatever. Um, or if they genuinely are like, I haven't got a clue what my casting type is. Because you've got to get that nailed and you have to choose your headshot. And I'll tell you why. Because you're the one who's going to be sending it out more than anybody else. You know, you're going to be attaching it to your emails. If you don't think, you know, that headshot represents you or it's not the best headshot in the pack, but someone else, and you know, in a Facebook group who you don't even know has told you to choose that headshot or your agent has told you to choose that headshot, just shouldn't be the way. You need to be comfortable with it in the same way. You need to be really comfortable with your showreel because when you're comfortable with your headshot and your showreel, you're going to be so much happier about reaching out to cast directors and agents um, because you're going to be like, yeah, this is good work. I look good. I sound good. This represents me. It's quality. I'm happy. Um, so don't let other people choose 
like you know the two two of the most critical pieces of your career don't let strangers on facebook groups as amazing as the acts on this facebook group is we've got 10,000 actors in there i think it's the most supportive facebook group for actors um still don't and don't let me choose it don't email me going what should i have in my headshot you should know you better than anybody else and if you don't start spending a bit more time with yourself and actually figuring that out because it will pay dividends in every area of your life the more self-awareness you can have about who you are your abilities, where your strengths lie, what you should be double down on, which are your strengths. If you've got a weak point, you know, I don't know, say accents aren't your thing, um, don't spend loads of time and money, you know, doubling down on your weaknesses. If you don't want to, if you want to make those weaknesses strong because you really want a Welsh accent or you really want, you know, a standard American accent is something that I really want to work on. So it is a weakness of mine. I will work on it. Welsh, not bothered at all. I'm not going to, it's a weakness of mine. It sounds absolutely <laughs> terrible. I'm not going to go and work on that. A lot of people are like conditioned at school to work on your weaknesses. If you weren't good at maths, your teacher would make you stay behind. But if you excelled at English, they were like, oh, well, you don't need to worry about that. Really, they should have been getting you to 10x down your English so you became exceptional. You weren't just great. Forget your maths. You're never going to use it. Who has used Pythagoras' theorem here? in your life not if you want to be an actor i've never used it um so triple down on your strengths as an actor as well and become great at something as opposed to all right at a few things um callum says definitely nervous still looking for an agent and feel like i'll fuck it up if i email a casting director i also don't want uh, don't have anything new to show them and feel weird just email and say hi i'm an actor where well, they must get a thousand of those but callum right Yes, you are just an actor, but, and this sounds a bit wanky, right? But this is the truth, right? Everyone on here is so ridiculously unique, okay? Um, There's only one of everybody on here, right? So you can play a role in a way that somebody else cannot play it. You look in a way that only you kind of look. Might be people who look similar in the same casting racket as you, the same colour hair, etc. But in terms of, you know... Yes, they do get thousands of emails. Well, they don't get thousands of emails actually at all. They will get a few dozen emails a week though. Um, you might just, you might have heard, I don't know if you were on the broadcast for this, but you might have heard Ree, Ree McDade Wren, Andy's casting associate in that clip I just played say, listen, you never know. Some days we get an email and it just lands on our desk on the day we're looking for a person like that. And I've been in an office of a casting director. I used to work for Beverly Keogh, fantastic uh, woman and casting director, cast some of the biggest stuff in the in the country in TV. And um, I've been in her office when Wendy, her casting uh, assistant, got a email through from a completely unknown actor who hadn't done anything. And his headshot just looked very... Beverly said, God, he looks really interesting. That's their exact words. Um, and a day later, they had him in for a general audition just to meet over lunch while they had a coffee because they thought, we've never met this guy. He hasn't done anything, but he's got a look about him. We're going to bring him in. Um, so you just don't know. I'm not saying it's going to happen because that's pretty rare. But if you don't send anything out, I can guarantee you it won't happen. And you just heard Ree, another casting associate there, say that it happens in their office as well. So if you imagine there's 50 offices in the country of decent cast directors casting decent stuff. If you're not writing to any of them, then you ain't got a chance. If you write into all 50 of them, you know, I don't know, you've got, well, you know, 50 times the chance of something good happening. And if you, um, if you have an email before, because like you say, you are scared of fucking it up or you're, you know, you don't feel that you qualify, then you probably haven't spoken to any of them. So none of them know you exist. So I can guarantee you none of them are going to give you a job. Um, you've got to just put yourself out there. And if you're doing it professionally, mate, you know, and even if you don't have loads of experience, you just don't know what these people are casting and whether your face just happens to match something that day. It might only be for one line. They might be casting someone and they just need, you know, someone who's going to deliver one or two lines if you knew. Um, it could be you. You, ju- you know, you just don't know. As I say, I'm not saying spam them. Just e- and don't email them just for the sake of it. But if you feel you have something to offer... Um, then definitely reach out. You just don't know. Marty says, I emailed Nina Gold yesterday um, to thank her for 1917. Awesome film. I haven't seen it yet, but looks the, the cinematography on it looks spectacular. Um, as a reminder, I auditioned at a studio last year and would love to again this year. Awesome, Martin. You know, you, you just don't know. It might get read, it might not get read, but at least you've given yourself a shot. Adam says, I'm in a show in the West End at the moment, but I'm the only in the ens- I'm only in the ensemble. I may not stand out at all. Is it still worth inviting some casting directors even if they won't really see me doing much? Depends on how much is not much, Adam, and whether you think it's a good show they might want to see for free anyway, because hopefully you can get them a comp, you know, and at least maybe you get to meet them at the end to say thanks for coming. Um, I don't know, mate. I mean, I'm, you know, 
theatre's not my bag. I've never done theatre. All I've done my whole life is TV. Um, so I'll stay in my lane and not give advice out on what you should do in the theatre. But, you know, I'm just all about taking every opportunity. You oh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, mate. I think that was something. Who said that? Was it um, wasn't Kobe Bryant, was it? Or uh, Michael Jordan, I think, maybe. But it's so true. You miss 100% of the shots you do not take. So I can guarantee you a way not to get any casting directors to your show, Adam, is to not email any of them. I can guarantee you a way to potentially get one of them there is by emailing 100 of them. It's just, you know, it's a numbers game in life, this. As is in so many other industries, though, not just acting. Dougal Ram, good evening, mate. I hope you are good. Um, Sharon says, listen to Andy Pryor's podcast to see what he says about emails. Yes, yeah, so I'll play that little clip there, but he goes into more detail. Um, every casting director who I get on acts on this TV. If you're not a member and you're new to this, by the way, there's over 200 hours worth of, of interviews with the biggest casting directors, agents, actors, and writers and producers in TV on acts on this TV. If you go and listen to those podcasts, my God, I swear I'm not just making this up. I'll show you some comments that have just been left this week on Facebook and Twitter. Um, I swear to God, this shit has changed people's lives and careers. Like it just does. Alison, who was, who was on here before, it's put something amazing on Twitter the other day. Um, you know, crediting ads on this for giving her the confidence to reach out to casting directors, learn more about the industry. And she got a job that paid her 20 times, well, 20 years membership. Um, and she managed, you know, to earn that money, take her kids to Disneyland. I think you bought a new car, Alison, I can't remember. Um, but it's through reaching out and putting yourself in the mix, throwing your hat in the arena. You would have never earned that money had you not got the courage to reach out. And if you listen to the podcast and that's on this, you watch the videos, you take part in the community, you're going to develop that capability and that courage and that confidence um, to do this. And if you sit on the sidelines and get scared, then you'll never do it. So you've got to throw your hat in the arena this year. Uh, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah says, uh, our career is not only the jobs we book, it's training, this training we do, new skills, new accents, headshots, I sometimes contact Casting directors sharing photos of me trying a new skill, for instance. That's interesting, you know. Why not? Why not get some postcards printed of you doing something cool? <laughs> you know? Send it out. Honestly, it'd be a little little thing. Hey, hope you're having a great week. Just learning how to juggle. <laughs> if you need any jugglers, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you never know. Dan says, I'm nervous when emailing casting directors. I don't know what is classed as relevant or unnecessary. What is good? This is where you overthink it and you paralyze. Analysis paralysis, Dan, isn't it? overanalyze stuff and you just paralyze yourself um there's there is i don't think there is anything you could say that is wrong bar you know retelling and regurgitating everything that's on your cv that's the main mistake i see a lot of people making it's basically going here's my spotlight cv with all my credits and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to regurgitate all 12 of them into this email it's going to be someone said to me who was it i can't remember who it was who i had on for an interview and they said i knew I knew they'd written too much when I had to print the email out to read over consecutive journeys. <laughs> like, you know, commutes in and out of work. That's too much. You know, given the highlights, what are the last two things you've been working on or what was the last thing you did? What are you looking to achieve this year? Do you know they're casting something that can be suitable for you? And do, you know, do all the figuring out for them. Tell them. Peter Hunt again said, it's not, he said, listen, it, you know, when I'm receiving so many emails, it's not my job to, to put in loads of homework to figuring out who you are and what you can be. And he's so right. If you can tell him in two lines in an email who you are, you know, what are you? Are you, an, uh, you know, a northern working class male who normally gets cast as, you know, workmen, joiners, plumbers? Tell him that. Are you, you know, a uh, middle class northerner? you know, who uh, normally gets cast as lawyers and doctors and barristers. I don't know, whatever it is, be specific so that you're taking the guesswork out of it for them because they don't want to have to go and figure you out. Um, so if you've got something specific like that, you can, you know, tell them in a couple of sentences and then job done. You just don't know what they're casting that day. I don't think there's anything you can really do wrong in an email that's going to screw your career up. There just isn't. The real, unless you, unless you send them a virus that blows up the computer or something like that um so um i would just keep it brief three paragraphs um and the more you do it the easier it gets i emailed today let me have a look at my email quite a lot of people and i got some instant replies as well but let's have a look one two three four five six so seven seven casting rights today 
all targeted emails that were specifically for them. Some of the stuff was the same in each email. Some of it was um, was more about them and their work and what I'd seen. Um, but it didn't take me very long. I don't know, like two and a half hours or something like that while I was editing video and Petch was around and we were editing some stuff for the website. Um, the more you do it, the more normal it feels and the quicker you'll get at it as well. Um, Luke says, I'm getting my emails prepared for casting races, ready to send them all. Um on the special day that Peter Hunt mentioned. So Peter said basically middle of January was when people were going to be back in work and back in the zone. I think that's true. Kind of this week, people will be much more open to doing work, to be honest with you. I think people will uh, have used last week to ease themselves in and this week they'll be knuckling down. Uh, so Peter was like, look, middle of the month, maybe like the 16th-ish of, uh, of January. It's not a, a, a set date, but I think from the middle of this week, from late this week, early next week, you know, if you've got, again, if you've got something that's fresh to say, reach out and say it. Um, how you go? Uh, Nick's in the house, all right, Nick's. Um, so what else have we got? 50 other comments have just come through. Again, apologies, guys. And I don't always get your, your comments in the right order on Facebook as well. It just feeds me them in relevance order sometimes, not in chronological. Um, I'm currently emailing casting directors with a link to YouTube showing my work on certain TV soap last year. Steve, if you've got that scene, mate, as well, um, and it's under two minutes and 20 seconds make a cut for Twitter, mate, and you can then upload it directly to a tweet and make sure that's pinned to the top of your Twitter profile. Um, if you are then communicating with casting directors online and they go and check out your profile, that's the first thing they're going to see and they're not going to have to click out of Twitter to go to YouTube. Um, it's fine having YouTube links for stuff that you send in emails. That's not a problem because um, you can't play video natively within an email. Um, but if you uh, were putting that on a tweet, um, it, or even on Facebook, you know, people don't want to go to YouTube from Twitter. They don't want to go to YouTube from Facebook. Uh, you want to upload it natively to Facebook. You want to upload it natively to uh, to Twitter. You can only do that if it's two minutes and 20 seconds or under, though. Um, so it's just something for you to think about. Um, Anna Robinson, great to be back, Ross. She said, I start back in class uh, this week. Feeling very motivated. Nice one, Anna. Hope you're uh, having a good uh, start to 2020. Alex says, do you think it's worth saying in the email? I know you cast such and such, and I loved it, so they know you aren't just copying. Definitely, mate. A hundred percent, absolutely. It just shows like you, you know, you give a shit. Um, you have to go into that and a huge in-depth analysis. Uh, but if there was something, you know, uh, you know, and if you genuinely liked it and you've got, you know, you are enthusiastic about something, um, definitely because it's what you'd say to a friend, isn't it? You know, if you meet meet somebody, um, you wouldn't just ignore ignore it. You know, it's kind of like nice to compliment people. People like it. I think your email should be friendly, not too over familiar, but you know, it should be kind of like, I always write my emails like I'm writing to a friend, not like jokey or over, like overly familiar, but just nice, kind, bit of personality, bit of fun, bit of humor. Um, it works. Honestly, it just works. And it also shows you confident as well and that these people are your peers because they are. Um, you know, I'm getting older now, but like I'm 37. Half the people I'm writing to in casting and directors, they're younger than me. <laughs> it's not like you're going, please, sir, you know, can I put my hand up to speak? Um, we are all peers. We're all after the same thing. We all want to create great work and we need each other to be able to do that. So it's not just a uh, a one-way street like, you know, you need them and they don't need you. We all need each other. Um Andrew, if you're having any issues with uh, with the Facebook feed, mate, just reload the page. Um, sometimes Facebook servers play up a little bit. Should be all good, though. It seems all right from where I am. Um, Sharon says, Andy Pryor will be getting an email tomorrow. What have I done? Everybody's going to be uh, just going to be bombarding. Um, no, it's fine, honestly. As long as you are not spamming, you are relevant, um, this is part of your job. Lloyd Lee in the house. All right, Lloyd Lee, I saw... Uh, Saw a video of you, mate. I um, I don't know whose page it was on. You'd done something with App for TV, I think. Someone had been shooting some stuff. I think you were in like a cafe or a restauranty kind of vibe, mate. It was funny though. Um, good. Uh, Kate uh, says, "Kate, Gabrielle's here as well." I'm sorry. There's so many comments coming through all at once. Got 83. That's just <laughs> that just popped up on my screen. Um, apologies if I uh, if I missed any. Lauren's here as well. Esther's here. Hope you are well. Uh, Kay says I would assume it isn't enough as it means they have work to do. They are busy and want it there in front and not have to click through. Just my thoughts, but maybe a hyperlink. Oh, what's that, Kay? I don't know what's referring to, but yeah, the the ultimately I don't know what you're referring to there. But if you can make the journey of them viewing your material as frictionless as possible like we all want we live in a world and it weird man like i don't know what you're like but i'm like i notice sometimes even if like i'm loading uh i'm you know when you you pull down on like twitter on your phone to refresh it 
and sometimes it'll hang. It might only hang for like three seconds before it refreshes, but it's not as quick as it would normally be. I'm like, what's going on? What's wrong? Like, it's like we, it's like we just want it instantly. We live in a culture where we want stuff accessible instantly. So if you're putting barriers between you and someone seeing your content, whether you are sending them away from Twitter to Vimeo or away from Facebook to YouTube, um, you know, or away from an email, something you could say in an email to, I don't know, somewhere else. Um, you need to make it as frictionless as possible so that they have the least resistance between you and, well, receiving your correspondence and the thing that you want them to do with it. So, um, yeah, definitely is the, the quicker you can make it, the better for them, definitely. John says he wants some new headshots. Uh, the one I have only shows one side, but not full picture. Yeah, you need your headshots to be full straight on, John. Got to see both sides of your face, mate. I see quite a lot of this. Um and I've seen it in a few Facebook groups, and it's all really well-meaning because you'll get photographers who aren't headshot photographers posting in Facebook groups going, hi, guys, I'm going to do some free headshots. And they'll show you like a, a sample shot of the one they've just done, and they're clearly learning. Um, but they're just side on like this. It's not a headshot. It makes us suspicious what's on the other side of your face, what are they hiding. Um, for those on the audio experience, I just turned my head in profile. Um, if you're thinking, what's he doing? Uh, so, yeah, your headshot's got to be straight on, man. Absolutely, straight on, decent colour headshots these days. Um, if you want uh, any, I'm probably going to do a podcast with Tony Blake again, because if you want any advice on headshots, um, or you just want great headshots, just go and browse Tony Blake's um, website. You'll just see in, like hundreds of incredible examples of great headshots. Without a doubt, he's kind of my headshot photographer of choice. He's in Chester. I get paid nothing to promote him. It's not a weird <laughs> promo deal. He's just top, just a top bloke as well. Really, really nice. Alex is here, says, also remember to consult with your agent which images to use from the contact sheet. The images that they feel can best sell you with the casting directors, producers, headshots can be a bit of an ego trip if you let it. Yeah, man. Honestly, like, You've just got to be happy with your headshot. It's got to be what you like. Um, and you've got to be, you know, you're the one who's going to be like promoting it and sending it out. And it should look like you. Like Jane said in that in in that clip I just played you. And if you want to listen to the full interviews, by the way, of, of what I've played, the little snippets tonight, ats on this.tv, they're all on there. Like I say, hundreds of hours. Um, but Jane said, you know, she's been so surprised sometimes when she's seen someone's headshot and then watched their show reel and she can't figure out in this in the first scene who the person is. It's like, which one are you? Um, because their headshot is too glamorized, it's it's too airbrushed, all of the uh, flaws have been taken out of it. Um, your headshot should just look like you on a good day. You don't want to look like shit in your headshot, of course you don't. You don't want bags under your eyes. If you've got a spot on your face as you're taking your headshots, it's perfectly fine to Photoshop that out, because that's not a permanent feature on your face. Don't take off freckles, don't take off moles, <laughs> don't take off lines, anything that's actually there. Um, but it should just look like you on a good day. And hopefully, you know, you will have got some sleep the night before your headshots. Um, you'll be in a good mood. You'll have had a cup of coffee and you'll be raring to go. You know, so you will get some shots that look like you on a good day. But yeah, don't try and pull the wool over people's eyes because when you get in the room, they'll be like, holy shit, this looks nothing like you. Chris, how are you doing? Hope you, uh, hope you are well. Larry says, showreel shot, Welsh accent is the boss. Have you got some Welsh in your uh, in your showreel, Larry? Why not? Good for you. Headshots ready. Good, good, good. Oh, Larry posted something in the Facebook group before, guys. Let me just show you something about this because this is something I'm going to take down from the Facebook group, but I didn't want to take it down until I've shown you. Um, there's loads of these sites popping up, and it's bullshit. Uh, I'm just in the Facebook group here. You'll see at the top... Um, Larry put this post on um, saying, is this legit? And this is from a company called Netflix-actor.com. It's fucking rubbish. Um, there's loads of these websites popping up that are like Netflix casting, blah, blah, blah. They're all fake. They're getting you to pay. You can tell the fake because when you click through, I mean, look at this bullshit that's going to pop up. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. I mean, this this looks pretty legit. They've done a good job of the website. But listen to like some of this. 5,000 actors wanted. Look at that. Fame and wealth. I mean, a fucking what a load of shit. A starring role in a Netflix original series can be a life-changing event for any actor. Do you think they need to pitch you? Do you think any site that was legitimate would need to pitch you on what it would be like to get a starring role in a Netflix original drama? What a load of bullshit. They're just after your money. What normally happens is they, they acquire loads of people. They all pay them money. Um, and then what happens is um, they get found out and then they get closed down. And then what you'll find is like a week later, oh, look at that. Just another one pops up. Um, so don't again, God, just don't buy into any anything like that. What I will do, uh, Larry, know you know that's fake, and everyone else does. Um, I'll probably take that post down from the group. 
after this it's just to not send traffic to it i just don't want anyone to see it in the group and not read what we've put about it saying it's shit and then they go over and then they end up signing up i don't want that so i just i thought i'd leave it up to show people and then i'll uh, i'll take it down ashley how are you doing i hope you're well nisesh how are you doing hope you're good um I hope everybody is um, everybody's well. What are you promoting here, Ash? Guys, sorry, not acting related, but I'm running my first marathon on Sunday in uh, in Funchal. Where's that? Please check out my story. Ash is the top guy. Ash has got the same eye condition that I've got, retinitis pigmentosa. We're both losing our eyesight. Ash, good luck with the marathon, man. If you want to support him, click his link in the uh, in the comments there um, and uh, drop him some cash. Hope it's going to a uh, good fund, Ash, like the Ross Grant fund to... Uh, pay for uh for my subscription to that fake netflix site only joking um it's for northwest ambulance air ambulance nice one mate good stuff uh matt how you doing um sharon says she also sent her stuff off to sue odell a while ago got a lovely reply from her well we're sending stuff out just don't wait for a reply because they get so many yeah don't worry if you get a reply honestly it doesn't matter and allison's got a really good tip here she said listen get a database set up so you know who you've emailed and what you've said i think that's a really good advice a simple spreadsheet or i use workflowy.com to do that um i literally have a list of casting directors to to um contacts a list of customers is contacted and then next to the contacted, I'd, I'd say how I've contacted them and the date. Um, so the, sometimes that's Twitter direct message, sometimes that's email, uh, sometimes that's LinkedIn as well. So um, yeah, I think it's a really great advice, Alison. Everybody should do that, definitely. Um, Mike said he might draft a few emails pointing out my weight loss. Yeah, definitely, mate, especially that. If people like Brendan, man, you've been transformational in your fitness and stuff and your body composition uh, over the last six months. Um, you must tell people about that because in their head, you still look the way you looked. So that could do you a disservice because they go, oh yeah, well, you know, it, it could actually do them a disservice as well because they they get in touch with you and bring you in based on how you used to look and you haven't told them you've changed. Um, then you could be wasting, both of you could be wasting time. You could be missing out on parts that you could now get that they don't see you as because they know you how you used to look. Equally, you could be brought in for stuff that you're not suitable for now because you don't look the same as you used to. Um, so Martin, yeah, definitely. And Brendan, definitely. If anyone knows you previously, tell them, uh, tell them about that, mate. Um, without a doubt. Um, let's have a look. Sam's just joined. So many comments. God, there's just so much on it. Um, and what time? We 104 new comments have just come through, guys, and it's already gone 10 o'clock. Um, I will be back live next Monday for some more of this. If you do want anything particularly, you know, important answered, uh, drop it in an email. Send me Ross at on this TV um, or tweet me. Twitter is probably the best place, you know, at Ross A. Grant at Act on this TV because I can reply really quickly and succinctly because you only get you know, 200 and what is it? 80 characters. Um, and it means you have to ask your questions succinctly as well, which is good. So I'm not reading three hours of emails. Um, anything else I can see in here? Alex Garrick's just here. Hope you're good. Uh, in regards to the spam site, they can't even manage to sort the Facebook group header image out because they're not okay. Honestly, it's a joke. Anything that says Netflix casting, anything like that, it's a load of bullshit. Netflix stuff only gets cast through legitimate casting directors who go through Spotlight and the biggest agents in this country. They don't ask Tom, Dick and Harry to apply because they need 5,000 people for fame and wealth. What a load of bullshit. Ruth Curtis, I hope you are well. Um, I hope you're good. Um, I think we got through most of the things there. Um, and Brendan says, yeah, hence the new headshots and showreel. Yeah, definitely, Brendan, man. You definitely need headshots and a showreel because you've lost loads of weight, mate. You look so different now. Um, I'm going to play that clip that I said I would play of Glynn. Also, I want to play a little video as well. Let's do this really quick. Have you got people all right to stay on for seven minutes? We'll stay on until 10 past 10, yeah? Give me a yes in the comments now if you're all right to stay on. and Because I've got a video I just want to play from a mentor of mine. Um Gary V, you'll know, you'll probably all know Gary V. He's such a massive personality online, but I've kind of followed this guy since 2011, I think, or something like that. Um, I've only met the guy once personally, sent a couple of emails to him, but like I just follow this guy quite religiously online in terms of his mindset. He's so spot on. He's mostly kind of like for business, but he's also about listening, just just suffocating your excuses and going after what you want. So it ties in really nicely with this tonight about reaching out and asking people for what you actually want. Everybody's saying yes, so you're all cool. Thank you very much for saying yes. Right. I'm gonna play you I'm gonna actually I'm gonna play you Glynn's clip first. Because it's about tax and the tax dead. It's only like two minutes, and the tax deadline is the thirty first of January. If you are a self-employed actor, um, 
if you're basically earning more than a thousand pounds in your acting career, you should be registered self-employed. Um, under that, it's kind of you know uh, questionable whether you need to. Um, you know the Inland Revenue, as far as I know, HMRC brought a rule in to kind of like wrap up like eBay sellers and stuff like that. Go, you know what? People are going to sell stuff and earn money. People are going to do stuff and earn money. You know, if it's under a thousand pounds, we're not bothered. If it's over a thousand pounds income, you need to start declaring it. So if you're an actor and you're you're earning over a thousand pounds for your acting work or your voiceover work or whatever it is, you should be ready to self-employed. The tax deadline for this year, well, the previous tax year, which was the 1819 tax year, is due to be paid on the 31st of January 2020. A lot of actors think, you know, they're small time, Nothing is going to happen to them. They can't get investigated. HMRC just go after the big boys. No, they don't because it costs them a fortune. They're way more likely to go after you and me because we're way more attackable. Um, is a little clip from Glenn. I did a great two-hour walkthrough podcast uh, podcast on Ats on This TV with Glenn talking you through, I mean, every single part of your tax and finance as an actor. If you've got two hours, which you all have, um, get a membership to on this.tv, listen to the podcast. It's the only podcast on the site that through just listening to it and following its advice, I guarantee you you'll save hundreds of pounds. The other ones could change your life because you could get a part on TV that could change your life if you listen to those ones. But this will gu- I guarantee you this one will save you money. Here's Glenn just talking a little bit about why, honestly, you need to be more and more on top of your tax, particularly as tax is all going digital soon as well. But listen to this. I'll be back in two minutes and I'll play that clip from Gary, which would be a nice way to end. First of all, they can investigate anyone. Like, there's no one too smart. They- they will investigate anyone. Anyway. <laughs> They'll come for you. Yeah, so um, obviously the implications of investigating someone who's smaller, it's going to be a, there's going to be less chance of having a big, big adjustment to make, but it's easier for them to find an issue. Yeah. As you said, um, there's a couple of ways really. So one, they just have basically a roulette wheel going all the time and it just spot check people. Just a random. So you can just randomly be checked. That You can't do anything about that. Um, another type is you get flagged on the system. So everyone has a sector. When they ask what you do, that will mean that your tax return type is put into a category. Yeah. And within that category, they'll, they'll know what everyone else is doing and kind of ratios and trends with type of expenses versus what your income is. It's like is. an algorithm for that industry. Yeah, that's it. And then not only that, they will look at your previous years compared to your current year. Yeah. So if they see big changes and things like that, they'll say, well, hang on a minute. Why has their mileage gone up from like 2,000 to like 20,000? Something going on there. What they'll do then is they don't want to use their resources, so then they'll ask specific questions about certain items because if you can give a proper answer and just prove why, it's not worth their time to investigate. So if they were a case of why is this jump so much and you say, well, actually, um, there was a lot going on in London. I was having to go back and forth all the time. Um, Accommodation's really expensive down there, so if I was travelling more. Here's my mileage log. These are uh, the dates of all the appointments in my diary. Yeah. And that's why it's increased to 20,000 miles in that year. That's legit. They'll go, oh yeah, that's what it is. No need to investigate. Thanks for your reply and that's it. If you go, oh well, I worked it out that I'm doing X amount of journeys a week so I averaged it out at this amount per week and what have you, they go, that that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not what we do. Um, I need a detailed mileage or can you provide it? Or no, I haven't, I haven't kept a record. Right, we're going to come in. Can you provide us with all your information for your tax return, oh. where you got every figure from? And I need like corresponding receipts and I want to see why you got this and you got that. And they'll just go through it, find everything that's wrong, whack a penalty on you for not doing things properly and to try to reduce your tax bill unfairly. And if you've underpaid tax, then you have to pay the difference on that. So yeah, you are not immune to being investigated by HMRC. Get like get your facts straight on what you can and can't claim for as an actor. There might be things that you're claiming that you can't, and there's going to be loads of things that you can claim that you're not claiming. Um, Glyn goes through everything in that podcast. Act on this TV. If you want to get access to the full thing, get your membership. Like for that for that podcast alone. It's worth your membership because you'll, um, like I say, you could save yourself a lot of headaches and loads of money. Um, Chris says, hi, Ross, who's casting, who's casting rights for EastEnders? And can you give me Andy Pry's email address, please? Hope you're doing well. Um, um, the casting rights for EastEnders is Julia Crampsey. Um, I can't give Andy's email address out uh, publicly just because I want people to do some work and go and find it on the cdg.co.uk. Um, you've got to get used to doing that. But yeah, if you go to the cdg.co.uk, look in the members directory, you'll find Andy Pryor's email address in there. Um, and I don't know if you find, I think you probably find Julia, Julia Cramps is in there as well. Um, 
the the BBC ones are not difficult to guess, and neither are the ITV ones. Everyone at BBC is generally first name dot second name at bbc.co.uk. Um, you might get unlucky occasionally when someone in the BBC has the same name as someone else. So then it would be first name dot second name one or dot second name two, whatever it would be um, at bbc.co.uk. And ITV, it's always first name dot second name at itv.com. Um, so you can guess basically, Chris, what people's uh, email addresses are. But yeah, the cdg.co.uk, go and look up Andy's email address. It will be uh, it will be in there for you, mate. Um, that's uh, th- that, that applies to everybody who's a, a Casting Directors Guild member. They're all in there. Um, so yeah, tax, go and get that sorted. Now I'm going to finish on this video with Gary V. I have absolutely no um, copyright claim over this whatsoever. Hopefully Facebook will let me play it out. It's a Gary V original uh, video. He's a great guy. should be following him as well. Um, but it's about figuring out, you know, getting in touch with actually why you're doing what you're doing in 2020. We spoke tonight about reaching out and asking for what you want from life, from your career. I always say life will pay any price you ask of it, but what are you asking for? So many people, including myself sometimes, are not asking for enough. I fall foul of this sometimes as well, where I'm like, is that too big an ask to ask somebody? Well, you know what? What are you going to lose by like not asking it? Well, you're going to lose everything. What are you going to lose by asking it? Well, you know, potentially like you're going to get it. So like you should be out there asking, but why do you want it? A lot of people in, in the acting industry I'm seeing making excuses about why they can't do things, why they don't have money to invest in themselves, why they don't have money to get a spotlight subscription and that's on this subscription, you know, an equity card, why they can't go to an acting class, whatever it is, they can't have the money, they don't want the money or they're looking to do things on the cheap, they want cheap show reels, free headshots and yet when it comes to them working, no, I don't do anything cheap and I don't I don't do anything for free. A lot of hypocris- uh, hypocrisy, you know, a lot of hypocrites kind of knocking around. Um, this video just will get you to ask a couple of questions about yourself, why you want things and do you really want those things that you think you want or do you just want to want those things and that's a bit of a weird kind of expression but there are some things that I know people just want to want because they think that it would make them cool if they got that thing or the people would like them if they got the thing it's not actually what they want they just want to want it for other people um listen to this like a three and a half minute video uh, but I think it's just a really nice way to end and just again get a little bit more clarity on this year why are you doing the things that you're doing why are you spending the money or wasting the money right now on things that you don't need and are you doing them to fulfill some kind of lack of whatever it is in your life or some kind of pain because you don't feel enough when you could be investing that money in something that's really good for you and your career like a membership to Ats on this Ats on this TV if you um, if you want to go and honest, honest to God I swear just go and get a month's membership. You'll see how it changed your life. If you want to watch that video as well, that casting director email address video I played at the very beginning, actonthis.tv forward slash casting. If you're on my email list, you will have got an email about it before tonight's email about this live broadcast. You'll have got it at like quarter to nine this morning. Um, so until next week, guys, I'm going to uh, love you and leave you. I'll be back next Monday night, 9 p.m. UK time. Please spread the word. That will mean the world to me. That's all I ask of you. Please just let people know about this. Let people know about actonthis.tv. Invite your actor friends to the party if they don't know about it. I know there are tens of thousands of actors out there who do not know about this and it could really impact their lives and help them in their career. Um, so, you know, do spread the word. But I'll be back Monday night next week, 9 p.m. If I can do anything for you in the meantime, tweet me at Ross A. Grant at Act On This TV. Email me Ross at Act On This TV. I do reply to everybody. It can sometimes take me a few days, but I will reply. And uh, yeah, have an amazing, uh, an amazing week. Anything could happen this week, guys. Get excited. Until next time, bye for now. This is dreams we're talking about. We're talking about dreams. So many people are asking me like, how, how do I live my dream, Gary? And you know, I don't have time. I have mortgages and bills and responsibilities in my job. I don't have time for my side hustle, my Twitch channel, my Instagram account, my Shopify store selling hoodies. And I keep getting to this new place, which is talk to me about your bills. Like, why'd you buy an apartment that stretches you? Why is your car so fancy? Like, why do you need the new Gucci every time? Like, why are you, why are you going out Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night? Like, why are you going to Coachella? Like, why, why are you going to Avengers opening night and buying the biggest piece of popcorn and candy? Like, the answer to all of your questions is not how much money you make or how much time you have, it's what you're spending your money on. Why do you want the newest pair of Yeezys? Why? Why? You're not 
not entitled to your dream. You're not entitled. Nobody's entitled to be a, an amazing dancer. Nobody that, that tours the world and gets to dance and open for Beyonce and make 580 a year and fucking live it and go to fucking, you know, you know <laughs> Monaco on the fucking weekends. Like, it's not how it works. Everybody starts at zero. Some people start at different places. But anybody who does it for themselves has to sacrifice. Like, yes, like, move. Like, my city's expensive, move. Like, my car payments are high. Sell your car and buy a piece of shit car. Take the bus. This is dreams we're talking about. We're talking about dreams. We're talking about, like, I want to be a professional gamer. We're talking about, I want to get paid $200,000 to give a speech. We're talking about shit that isn't normal. Dreams require sacrifices. People don't want to sacrifice. Like some reason, DNA, parenting, circumstance, I'm on the extreme end of everything's my fault. Nobody owes me shit. I shouldn't get anything unless I bleed for it. It's one big framework, DRock, of like, of self-esteem, lack of self-esteem, slash insecurity, entitlement, or accountability. It's these huge things. I'm not judging people other than I'm asking people and I'm bringing up a different debate that isn't being talked about a lot, which is why do you want to go to Coachella? That's what I'm interested in.